Hello and welcome to Taboo Talk, the podcast brought to you by Boots that asks the seriously awkward health and wellness questions so you don't have to. I'm your host, Vogue Williams, and today we're talking about what it means to be neurodivergent. If you're affected by anything you hear today or are struggling, please seek professional help and contact a GP. It's widely accepted that around 15 to 20 percent of the population in the UK are neurodivergent. In other words, their brains work differently from what we consider as average or neurotypical. So they might process things, learn or behave in different ways. When we think of neurological conditions, we probably think of autism, ADHD, dyslexia or dyspraxia. Recently, the concept of neurodiversity has started to be seen as a positive thing, but we still have a way to go. So on that note, I'd like to introduce my first guest, Louise Hillier. Louise is a chartered psychologist and specialist in neurodiversity. Next up is the wonderful Christine McGuinness. Christine is a model and television personality and has appeared on The Real Housewives of Cheshire, The Real Full Monty and The Games. Christine has three children with autism and was diagnosed herself with autism in 2021 at the age of 33. In 2021, she took part in a BBC documentary to raise awareness about autism. We also have the brilliant Tommy Mallet. Tommy is a reality star and business owner who rose to fame after joining the cast of TOWIE in 2014. Tommy is dyslexic and at 31 he found out he has ADHD, which he calls his superpower. Before being diagnosed, Tommy had openly shared his struggles and is now using his experience to raise awareness about ADHD to help others. Before we start, I just need to say that Tommy and Christine are speaking from their own personal experiences and this podcast should not be used for medical advice. If you do need personal medical advice on any of the topics covered, please do talk to your GP. Louise, I'm going to start with you. There's a few different diagnoses under the neurodivergent umbrella. Can you talk us through what neuro- neurodivergent means and explain some of them? Yes. Yeah, so if someone's neurodivergent, it means yeah. that there are some differences in the way that their brains are wired, if you like, um, and that, that that makes them slightly different from the majority of the population. Yeah. Yes, and the term really um, relates to the term neurodiversity and biodiversity, which suggests this natural variation in the population and that this is a natural and positive thing. And at first, it particularly was used in relation to um, autism, but it's also been ex- extended to include ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, Tourette syndrome, even, even mental health conditions. Oh, wow. Dyspraxia, you said that you might have it, Christine, did you? Yeah. Is that no. when you like, you're really clumsy? Yeah, um, I haven't got much awareness of of space. Ah, Extremely forgetful. Um, Yeah, often bump into things. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. but I always just thought that was part of being autistic. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's quite interesting that um, different neurodivergent conditions are often confused, but also it's very common to have more than one neurodivergent condition. Yeah. So autistic people very often do have dyspraxia as well, and key characteristics of dyspraxia are to do with yeah, clumsiness, difficulties with motor coordination, but there can also be issues with spatial awareness that can lead yeah. to problems with parking, for example, bumping into people. <laughs> <laughs> How many car crashes have you had? <laughs> <laughs> the wheels in your car. <laughs> what would you say the main challenges for people with ADD or autism that face on a daily basis? Um, I think they vary according to the condition and also according to the individual. But people with ADHD at home, for example, they might have difficulties keeping on top of domestic tasks, keeping on top of personal hygiene. Also, they might have a tendency to start projects around the house and not... Get finish them, them. Get them. Yeah, not finish. Not finish. I literally them. all I hear is Spencer. Now that you've said okay. it to me, I'm like Spencer. Spencer. Yeah. Spencer. Yeah, I, I can't finish anything. I've always got twenty to thirty tabs open on my phone or my yes. computer, and I'm flicking through all of them, trying to do everything at once. I really struggle to stay focused. Yeah. Mine's completely well. other, completely different to that. Okay. Don't have none opened. My house is spotless. And I have about three or four showers. I day. don't know why I know that about you. Okay. I do know that about you. Yeah, yeah. Look a bit clean or something. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm very OCD with the house and myself. Yeah, so the house has to be all completely clean, everything tidied away. I've I've decorated the house just plain white. It's quite clinical. Yeah, yeah. Um, lovely. Yeah, no, that, that's how I like it. That gives me some kind of clear head space do you feel like if it's organised in your house your head feels more organised I mean it feels well no my my head's absolutely chaotic but it's better (laughs) than if the house is a mess too and then with the washing side of things I probably over wash Oh, okay. But yeah, I've seen well, I'd it love to live with both of you. I love <laughs> <that> tidiness. <laughs> so 
about when you were a child? Were you tidy then? Was always. Your bedroom tidy? Okay. Always. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, always. Yeah. Like even, for example, I use around like, 100 mil of perfume a month. Always. Spencer does Probably that. More I think that's that. wild. More than that, yeah. yeah. And I wash and condition my hair like twice a day <laughs> to the point where it's like coming out. It's everywhere. Okay. Yeah, like, I have crazy. three, four showers a day. But my children, so my children, I've got twins that are 10 and my youngest is seven. Yeah. And they're all autistic and their rooms are absolutely spotless and it's not just me doing it, it's them. Everything is lined up, everything is organised yes. and, and yeah. that's how they like their space to be. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, so obviously when, when they were like that and I'm like that too, I didn't see the connection there between no. us all being autistic. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. So you, yeah. 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 So you were you were diagnosed. Were you thirty one when you were diagnosed? Yeah, yeah. And did you never ago. have like an inkling? Yeah, I did. Well, I always knew I was different at school. I really struggled. Um, I just felt like I didn't fit in. I couldn't focus. Even though academically I was fine, I was always in the top set. Mm. No one could ever understand how I got there because I weren't really putting the work in. But I was obviously yeah. clever enough to get up there. I just I couldn't stick to it. I couldn't finish the task and and I left school before I was 14 the school basically said you know we don't know what to do with her um and I couldn't cope I couldn't cope socially I couldn't cope in the classroom I couldn't cope in the canteen which sadly led to an eating disorder which is quite common for autistic women especially because um, you, you said you don't like eating with people yeah when I was a teenager the doctors kind of just said oh you know she's a teenage girl she's obviously worried about her figure and the way she looks and it, it wasn't that at all nobody ever actually asked me what what is it with the canteen that you don't like yeah. and if they had of I honestly don't know if I would have been able to articulate it then because I didn't understand it myself but it was quite simply that it it seemed such a mess the smell the sound the taste of the foods not knowing what was going to be there on the menu every day and then having to think okay well where do I sit who, who do I go to because I didn't have friends yeah. so all of it was just too much and and that led to me being quite poorly now I understand it I, I try and look after myself the best I can I'll take vitamins but I'm still on a, a very typical autistic diet which is like a plain beige food diet everything is dry do you have the same thing like every day pretty much yeah. so what's your breakfast yeah. lunch and dinner um so toast is a favorite in my house <laughs> for me and the kids toast bagels um chicken nuggets and chips for the kids it's is lovely. always popular plain pasta i just don't like anything too wet like a lasagna you're never going to see that in my house like <laughs> anything even going into a restaurant now i'm trying more but yeah. it's it's taken up until my 30s for me to walk into a restaurant and even attempt it just because of the smell of the room the noise that you know people getting up and walking around all of that for me is is quite a lot to deal with whilst trying to eat as well I want to live with you you know your house is clean I, want, I want to live with chicken you chicken nuggets <laughs> and dinner no, no noise around the table it's unreal it's like the best it's house ever <laughs> oh, imagine, oh boy that's wow. a dream what I find fascinating about the assessment like you told me it was five hours I'd, I'd love to do it out of interest but I don't think I could sit there oh, for five mate. I couldn't yeah. do it <laughs> I physically couldn't yeah. uh, pay attention for five hours. Yeah. When yeah. were you diagnosed? Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. And did you ne did you never think that like who who told you to go and do it? Because you both separately have spent time with my husband and both of you have said so I told the him. second you I met him that he was ADHD. I, I told him and it's always one of those moments where you're not sure if you should say or not, but Spencer was just just so you know what it's like, he's happy, he's full of life, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. so much energy and yeah. he thought, No, you can take it like and he's doing amazing with it. So <laughs> it wasn't like it was affecting him yeah. badly and he needed to know. Yeah. Whereas for me it was having quite a negative impact not having that diagnosis. Yeah, my Got yeah. it, I calmed down. Mine was painful. But you know you said about that five hour uh mine was ninety minutes. Okay. Yeah. And I got up after twenty minutes to go to the toilet and I just had to stand outside for a minute. And yeah. the geese and how are you feeling? And I said, I'm gonna be honest with you. I seriously want to do some damage to you now. Like, oh, I know, really? honestly. No, you just I got angry about it. Just, I'm really wanna do some damage. It's too quiet in here. Okay. Yeah. You're talking too soft, you're talking too slow. And yeah. I, I knew that I had something like that different about me yeah. yeah but more so i feel like mine was more so i didn't understand how i could get a thought in my head like a creation or something like that and just do it a thousand times quicker than anybody else i, yes. I just couldn't come across anyone as, who could do things as fast as me yeah, yeah. yeah. so like creating companies i like have a have a thought in the middle of the night write it down wake up in the morning and do it yeah with that sort of thing i always thought yeah i'm definitely different and that yeah. was my advantage yeah but 
when you have kids and the crying and like people's eating habits of like slapping their lips, uh -huh. scratch, scratching their plates. I know it sounds like a funny thing, but if someone scratches their plate in front of you with their knife, yeah. it actually makes my back teeth. Yes. The pain yeah. is like the rage that yeah, comes through I me. Feel, yeah. Like mm. I went out, I was having something to eat with Georgia yesterday. Um, was, we, was, we was doing some filming and we was in a pie mash shop, yeah? Yeah. And someone come in and started eating and they don't have knives in there. They use a spoon and a fork, right? And this man, and bless him, he's a lovely old man. <laughs> and he come in and he kept smashing his plate. And I had to stop the filming because I was sweating in there. Oh, and I really? said, I, I can't, I can't sit no more. It's too, it's too quiet for me. So the same as Christine, I didn't, when I was like, when I used to work, I didn't like eating in round people because I wouldn't be able to look at them because if they'd done something I didn't like, it put me off my dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I had, I had this obsession, right, of like when people were eating looking at their mouths like if someone's like okay. I could see I don't know this weird thing them slapping <laughs> their lips like doing certain like I'm dipping same, yeah. dipping and things like that it just made me so like I, it was uncomfortable like it but would it, literally put you off your food I wouldn't be able to eat That's, I, I still I go at nah. I still go at nah. someone you know one of them. Well, it's it's kind of gross when you're like when you're describing it like that. Even I'm like, that's disgusting. Think about it, like, it's, <laughs> it's no, but it's people don't mean it sometimes. But the, the feel like the time when I really started noticing it when I started traveling, mm. traveling the world, I had enough money to go in business class, right? Yeah. They use China in there because it's like yeah. I don't know for some reason they want to be posh, right? Yeah. The noise of people eating and smashing their their yeah. knives and forks on them plates in that flight. A few times I had to go back down the end of the plane and just go and stand there. Yeah. Because I'd have actually caused serious problems on the plane. But I think that's a good way to, to go about it, even though it's not ideal because you're removing yourself. I think when you understand and you accept that actually it's not their fault, they're just eating, they're, they're enjoying their business. We nearly had a few emergency landings. <laughs> yeah. like, that, that's only now. There's a long but, time we did it. When you accept that actually they're not the problem, and, and we're not the problem either, but it's us that have got that hypersensitivity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. picking up on all so of these. So you have hypersensitivity to noise and everything. Oh, everything. The baby's crime was everything. the thing that got me actually diagnosed. So oh. yeah, when I, when, I, when I proposed to Georgia, he was filming it, and I'll never forget all I wanted to do is get out the place we was in. <laughs> I just wanted to move from there. It was in like, a beautiful place in Mexico, and I was like, right, people are looking now. And I was like, I'd spent all this money on these, these flowers. And I was like, get out of here now, George. Come, let's get out of here. And so I'll never forget, instead of celebrating, I got annoyed because the waitress kept interrupting every time I was talking to Georgia. So like, you know when they're trying to do their job? And like, yeah. But it's like, you go to somewhere posh and they want to put the, the thing on you, and then they want to turn your things on. I'm like, for me, I'm like, I stopped coming near me now. And, I was, and that's when I really realised there was something wrong with me. And then, like, the impulse at the same time didn't help me. Like, I was, I'd buy a car, mm -hmm. and then within a week, it was, I'd have to buy another one. And then I'd sell that one. And then it just ended up being too much. Georgia would come home and I'd sold everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it got so bad. Like, so bad. It was like... So it, 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 you kind of hit a spot where you were like, right, I need to do something about this. Yeah, me and Georgia was actually splitting up. Went to, um, we was in Spain, yeah. and I was like, all right, we're moving to Spain. <laughs> and I di it didn't help that like, I was going through a really successful time of my life. And I come home and I was like, we had a really bad holiday. It was like, it was a crazy heat wave in Spain. The baby was young, the baby was ill, and it just gets so much for you, don't it? It does, it's mm. a lot. And I, I'm, by the time I get out of the room, my t-shirt's sweating, and I'm like, I'm just a bit overwhelmed. And the week after, I was in Spain buying a villa, and I... <sighs> I've gone to the woman, I was like, I'm buying this and we're buying it today. Otherwise, I'm not having it. So next thing you know, I'm just like buying houses abroad and coming home and George is like, well, I've not seen it. I'm like, it's done now. And it was just like that impulsiveness yeah. was getting worse and worse yeah. and yeah. worse. And me and George just weren't getting on. We was just constantly, I just, I didn't know how to be present. I was struggling being yeah. present because I was just running away from everything all the time. Drinking like 20 espressos a day and just yeah. making crazy decisions. Like that is pretty wild essentially. I wouldn't have survived getting through this year I w it wouldn't have happened to me like, yeah. I'd, I'd, honestly I owe Georgia the world because for someone to be a mum and be able to actually go through what she was going through with me as a person mm. is, is, is I'll take my hat off to her honestly because I was so bad to be around yeah. like, I was aggressive um, unless she was talking about something I was interested in don't talk to me about it it was all about the vision and the goal for my businesses yeah. don't talk to me about anything else if someone tells me a story and takes too long forget about it because I know what you're saying before you're saying yeah. it to me yeah how did you feel though when you were diagnosed was it, was it kind of a relief oh, I was praying 
Yeah, I was praying. You were just praying you did have it. I'll never forget. I was in the room with the guy and I was... Because Georgia said it to me. She said, look, I feel... Because I thought I would have depression. Yeah. And because I, I went through a lot of tests and I was like, let me go and find out what I've actually got. And it, I was doing therapy and not much was working. And did then, the therapist not pick up on it? No, unfortunately she didn't. Mm. Like, you see how this guy's moving here? <laughs> Yeah. No, no, I'm not just being serious. I'm setting an example, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I knew he was gonna get up before he was gonna meet. I'm thinking, yeah. sit down now because now you're gonna you're gonna interrupt what I'm thinking. And I'm, I don't mean that to you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's what people with ADHD uh, they have. Yeah. So like yeah. I know like so far in front of things, I can't talk to you because I know he's moving. Is so it annoying like, you that I'm drinking water every? No, so no, often? that's fine because we're having a conversation. <laughs> yeah. But just that sort of things, it's like you pick up on it. You know that yeah. noise of that creak or that floor? Yeah. yeah, that was like bang in my ear. I could hear yeah. it so yeah. bad. Yeah. So sorry about that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as I was so so, what happened was is George was like, look, I feel like you've got there's more to like we was about to split up and I was moving out the house. Yeah, and we had a one year old. Wow, you yeah, got I was to moving that out stage. the house. It was that bad, yeah. So when I knew it was bad is when I bought a villa, I was in Spain, I had everything I'd ever wanted as for a 30 year old. There was nothing I needed. Yeah. And I was sitting in this villa in Spain by myself. And I was like, wow, what has happened? I've not got my family here. And I didn't have a family to go back to because they couldn't be around me. Yeah. yeah. And my dad had come with me and he was wearing like flip flops. And I'm not going to say exactly <laughs> what I said to him. But the, f the flipping, you know, that flip yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Called him up. I said, listen, I told you not to bring them with you, yeah? <laughs> and I'm serious, and this sounds so bad. We're going to fall out to such a bad extent, we will never be able to talk ever again if you don't take them flip-flops off. Like, it was that bad. Because it was, and I was like, why is this happening to me? Why what did, did your dad say when you said that to him? He, kno he knows I was a little bit different, but I was so, like, no one would argue back with me because it's not worth it. Because I, I won't stop. I'll just carry on. I've, I've got that mentality anyway. But it's just, it was more, it's easier for them to just leave it. And I feel terrible about it now. Yeah. But when Georgia made me go and see someone, I remember sitting there and I just praying. Amazing of her to do that. She though. said, you've got to go and see someone. Do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I've never said this. She was watching Love Island and she see that that guy I left because he had ADHD. I think his name was Jack or something, yeah? yeah. And then she was like, oh, it ain't just for naughty kids. There's actually so much more about it. And she sees someone left the villa. Because I had ADHD. Yeah. So when I was sitting there, I was thinking, this guy ain't going to tell me I've got ADHD. Because I, I see, he, won't, he was just like that. I was thinking, please, sir, I've got it. Because I'm going to lose my family. I need help, please. Yeah. And I went, look, before you diagnose me, mate, listen, I really need help. Please tell me I've got it. He went, got it. <laughs> I said, I've <laughs> never, ever seen anyone with it as bad as you. Really? He said, I want yeah. to test you for autism too. So Did I was you like, get tested for autism? No, I didn't. Because I was like... Well, sort of override most things what I do in life. It's my way or nothing. Yeah. And I was like, all right, sweet, whatever. But then he told me I was going to go and take medication and how it was going to affect me, da-da-da. So I was like, all right, we'll do that and then I'll go down the next step. And it was so life-changing. I didn't look back ever again. So medication really helped you? Yeah, I couldn't live without it now. How, both of you, how have you found it for your family and friends? Like, do they find it difficult? Like, I find the stories that you're telling me entertaining, but, like, I don't think I'd find it funny if you're giving out to me about my flip-flops. <laughs> yeah, but it's a relief. But I actually get that. That noise is annoying when you think about it. It's, like, it I understand it. Do you know what it is? It's like, you don't, I don't, do you, do you feel like you've got a memory of remembering things from years ago? I can remember every detail of conversations of what people were That's wearing, what, what they smelled like, what was in the room from years ago. My short term memory is, is absolutely, it's gone because really? I'm on to the next thing straight away. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's where I struggle because I'm like, I'll be sitting there like, Dad, you know what? You know, when I was six, you took a liberty there. And now I'm like, <laughs> and that's how it become. Like, I was like, well, now I've got a kid, yeah? I'm realizing the way you treated my mum at that time weren't right. Now I've got a kid, da da da. And it was like, I feel bad now that I, was, I put them through a lot of ag the last yeah. few years. Well, I think, like, how, how did your family cope with this? For my family, it didn't come as a shock. I feel like yeah. everyone knew and never said. Um, for my children, it's, it's helped massively, and I think that's the biggest positive to come out of my diagnosis is that when, when it came to that time of me sitting with my three children and discussing them being autistic, yeah. that I could say, look, it's okay, mummy's autistic too, and mummy goes to work, and mummy's trying to make friends. Still. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not great at it, but I try. Um, and everything I do now, all of, all of the jobs I do, all of the experiences that I do that I don't want to do, yeah. I do because of my children, because I don't want them to live 
the life that I did where, you know, I was a recluse for nearly eight years. I barely left the house. If I was going to go to the shop, I'd go at two or three in the morning. Really? Um, wow. Not great at, at keeping friendships, not because I'm not nice. I would always, I'd, people get on with me and I, and I like everyone and that's part of the problem because I just like everyone. But then, yeah. you know, trying to actually build a friendship I would struggle with. So the social side of things, because I wouldn't be going out. I wouldn't be going on girls holidays and I wouldn't be going for meals and things. So I could never keep up with the friendship side of things. So for my children, I'd say it's helped them the most because I'm pushing my own boundaries more than ever. So and so you're helping them push that. theirs. Yeah, because they need to watch me. And then when with the food side of things now, that's my next job I need to tackle. I have got to get over the, the sensory side of things with food because, you know, I want my children to be healthy as much as possible. And although I'm fine and I'm really, really lucky um, with my health, I never get sick when, when I look at my diet. You know, I'm surprised, but I want my children to be eating a bigger variety. But they're yeah. getting a lot more help than what I had because they were diagnosed younger. And at school, they have one-to-one. -one. They've all got EHCP plans, which is an educational health and care plan. Yeah. Um, and part of that for them is food play therapy. So part of their schooling is them touching food and oh. being around food and all of that, which I, oh. I would hate and I can't do it. And I've yeah. been to their therapy sessions and I can't do what, they're, what doing. they're doing. Now, it's nothing like it sounds traumatic, like putting the hand in soup. They're, they're not doing that. They're not yeah. doing anything like that. It's literally just just being around food and maybe playing with dry cereal and things like that they can manage. But for me, I mean, he even couldn't. some of the toys sometimes, it might be plasticine or, you know, Play-Doh or slime and things, and I, I can't move it. If it's if it's on the table in the house, I have to ask someone wow. if they can go and move it because I just can't touch it. Things like that I really want to conquer for, for yeah. the children. Do you eat How vegetables? Did you uh -huh. Sorry. Uh, Do you eat vegetables? No, because there isn't any, apart from potatoes. Yeah, same, yeah. yeah. Do you eat any fruit? No, well, I do uh, now, yeah. I, I can eat a banana. I bet you can. Because it's beige. Shock. <laughs> have you tried? Ju have you tried juicing? No, because they've got lots of bits in. So I've no, 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 they haven't. No, 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 no. I've don't. never eaten a tomato. No, have I? Never eaten a tomato. There's so much going yeah. on with a tomato. It's like it's <laughs> it's almost crunchy on the outside, then it's yeah. soft, and then it's got slimy <laughs> bits in textures. the middle. And I don't know what people do with a tomato. Like I've tried tomato soup completely smooth, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I can eat a margarita pizza. That's yeah, like same. The most I love them. I love them. Thing. Yeah, and it's almost the same everywhere you go. You know, change is a big deal if you're autistic. Yeah. I don't like change at all um, but yeah for, for help and support around my family it's it's been amazing but I'd say the best thing has is, is been where it involves my children inspiring when, when did you sorry, sorry when did you get your kids diagnosed uh, my children were all three and a half um, I wasn't expecting it at all I didn't understand autism and I'm embarrassed to say now because I know so much about it that back then I knew nothing, never really heard of it, you know, didn't didn't get it at all. So I'm going through this whole process with my children because they had speech and language delay. Yeah. Um, none of them could speak before they were four. All they could say was, Mummy, Daddy, please and thank you. Yeah. Um, but they could do the five times table. Amazing. Just draw in it. They could do yeah. that. But because they couldn't speak like other children at nursery, like it was the nursery staff and, and my mum that were really pointing it out as it being a problem. Whereas for me, I was just like, well, I know what they want and what they need. Like I, yeah. I understood them. They didn't need to speak to me. And I was like, it, it's fine. I don't get what everyone's panicking about. But I went along with it. They were ready to start school. And I just thought, no, they do need some speech therapy. So that's where we started. Yeah. That kind of spiralled into them going down the assessment route and, and the day they were diagnosed I felt a bit like you in that room where I'm so angry at the time that this paediatrician was telling me that my children had this condition it was a condition that I knew nothing about which is mm. why I was angry so like, how dare she say that there's something wrong with my children they're absolutely fine they're beautiful they're perfect like what's What's the what, what's the problem? How can she say that? She's just assessed them a few times and she's given us this diagnosis and I felt so angry about it. Yeah. And then I went away and, and I pretty much studied it and that's what I've done for the last yeah, good. five or six years. I've studied it and I understand it. And of course she was absolutely right. They, they were very obviously autistic and so yeah. was I. A lot but of people, a, a lot of people have, um, 
like parents do they're in denial about it too though, aren't they my, yeah. like, my mum and dad it was so clear well you don't want yeah. that I but suppose for you I'm going to be honest you're so inspiring you know oh. yeah. so inspiring it's crazy yeah. to be able to like use you as a reference for autism yeah. is insane it's so inspiring I'm so, so, you know so what, glad I'm, that you spoke about it I, I am too and I went through a stage especially in my teenage years when everyone was choosing what they wanted to do remember your teachers come round and they're like what do you want to do in sixth form and everyone seemed yeah. to have an idea and I didn't know so I've got no idea I don't, I don't know I changed my mind constantly but I always knew I wanted to be a mum yeah. and now I know that I was always meant to be a mum but I fully believe I was meant to be their mum and they yeah, were meant yeah, to be course, my children yeah. me and my children the four of us together are completely ourselves and comfortable and authentically just just ourselves. It's no problem if we sit in silence for two hours. It doesn't yeah. matter if we're not sat playing on games. If I'm not, and I don't feel guilty about it if I'm not spending every minute constantly trying to entertain my children because no one we can are do that. all quite no. happy to yeah. sometimes yeah, just good. do nothing. Yeah. But around other people and other families you, you have that pressure of you know you should be going to play centers you should be going on holiday you should be doing this well no actually in my family that doesn't work they don't like that and that's why i was meant to be their mom and they were meant to be yeah, my that's children. amazing yeah how does it work with play dates and stuff like that with your kids um it, it doesn't so yeah <laughs> well that's actually kind of a positive <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm still learning so i'll say to the other parents at school like please always invite them if there's a birthday party like i want them to feel included um, yeah you know, my children are doing better at making friends than I ever did, but they still do struggle. Yeah. Um, I don't think they fully understand friendships. Like, they, they know the other children in the class, but the communication between them isn't, like, you know, others that are their age. So I'll say to the parents, just invite them, and usually what happens is I'll get the invitation, I'll look at it, and they'll go trampoline park, and I'll go, I'm really sorry we can't make it. Because yeah, but I still, know they got invited. so overwhelming. Yeah. 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 But if there is ever a place where I know it's going to be quieter, or if it's been booked out just for, you know, a few children, then I'll take them. Yeah. Um, if we're it's really amazing that you push yourself home. to do that as well, though, because you probably don't want I've to do got that. To, no, I don't. I, I really don't. But I've I've got to for them. I, yeah. I want them to be as social as possible. And I think it, there's a fine line between encouraging my children and pushing, and pushing them. them. Mm. And I feel that myself. So it's it's trial and error, but we're yeah. doing really good. And, and I feel I feel in a really good place with, with just being my kids. It's where I'm my happiest. Yeah. Smashing quiet. it. <laughs> Do good you job. think, uh, Louise, like, is it hereditary? Yes. Yeah, so in most cases, um, oh. ADHD and autism will be hereditary. <laughs> so you'll find other members of the family who... Who yeah, else? Why are you smiling? Like, Who has this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There can be genetic anomalies such as an extra chromosome, and that can, oh. that can lead to ADHD and or autism. Isn't that Down syndrome? Be, well, Down syndrome yeah. would be one example of that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there are other syndromes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you laughing? Who else has it in your family? <laughs> Alright, so listen, you know, when we was going back to the flip flop thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, listen, Dad, I'm going to be honest with you. I think you've got it as well, mate. <laughs> so I went and got him diagnosed on TV. Really? Yeah, and it come out that he's got it. And you can see from a mile away that he has it. But let me tell you something, right? My main fear in life is being normal. Because because I've got ADHD and I can see something so wider. Yeah. I, I just, it's my main fear is just being like, on, like my brother's completely a normal person, yeah. right? George is normal. My mum is, I don't even know what she is. She's beyond anything. But my dad is also, he's got ADHD, he's been diagnosed. So when I think about it, I don't, I'm not going to say I hope it, but I, if my little boy has got ADHD, he's had a touch. And I think that's good. Yeah. You see it as yeah. a superpower. A super, I'm the most successful person in generations of my family. Yeah. And friends. And from where I even come from. Yeah. So like, if I didn't have what I had... I would just be normal. Do you credit your success? To what your, does that mean? Do you like? Do you think with your ADHD that's made you successful? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, I remember when they asked me what I was going to be when I was a kid and I said a billionaire. <laughs> that was the first thing I said. And I don't, I've literally done everything myself and it was all from come out my mind. So if there was something wrong with my mind, I wouldn't be able to vision to do what I've done now. Yeah. And in what I do, I'm the best. 
no isn't one better than me. Isn't and that's it amazing that. you've both done what you wanted to do? You really wanted to be a mum. You really wanted to be a billionaire. Yeah, <laughs> you're on your I'm way. I'm not a billionaire like, yeah. yet. No, I'm not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but I, but I, think, I think Tommy's right. I think being being on the spectrum, if you're ADHD or autistic or both, creativity is usually quite a big part of that. Mm. And yeah. like Tommy said, he sees it as a superpower. I wouldn't want to be neurotypical either. Um, although there's times I would like to be able to do what other people do, just the, the normal stuff, like, yeah. you know, I, I love who I am now. You wouldn't be you. I'm more comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I never thought I'd be an author. I, I still can't believe I'm an author. I can't believe I write books for children because yeah. I didn't do well at school and I didn't enjoy English. But I always wrote, when you were saying earlier, you'll write stuff down at 2, 3 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always journaled, I've always done that. But I never thought I would be able to actually make it into something yeah but like like work like her job and the fact that i can i do think that's probably yeah, part that's of wicked. being autistic do you feel like there's enough well first of all do you, do you feel like there's a stigma around it actually uh not so much now years medication ago, there is yeah yeah, yeah. can i just revert think? back to something because you know you yeah. just said you was an author yeah so i couldn't read and write until last year yeah really yeah yeah i couldn't read and write at all so i, I could like do a whatsapp but I'd never be able to read like a sentence out of a book because I'd have forgot what it was saying before it before yeah, I even got I, to the end you know, of it. I can't read for an author. Yeah, I actually now can't read. I can read and write perfect, yeah. And every time I'm on the plane, I write a short book. Yeah. And because of my ADHD, the way I can story tell is insane. I can make you feel like you're in the place at the time. Yeah. And when I share it to people, they're like, "Wow, how have you just done that?" I was like, I "Don't know. I only learnt last year how to do it." So having that 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 superpower, as I say, that we've got, is open so many more doors yeah. than if I was just normal. And the, back to the stigma part of it, the stigmas around the medication, not having ADHD. Yeah. So everyone yeah. wants to tell you, don't they? Everyone, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, I'm like, well, you don't know how it feels to sit there music in your head all day and yeah. thinking about 4,000 different things. Do you find that with medication that you can, like, you focus more, you, you don't have a thousand things going through your head? Um, it depends what's going on and what sort of deals I've got going on at the table, uh, like on the table at the time. But if if um, I've not got lots of stuff happening there, I can focus. But at the moment, I'm probably talking to you. I'm probably thinking of like ten different things. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's fascinating to hear somebody else say about the music in the head because I often say to people when they say, "What does it feel like?" I say it's like there's a radio on in my head Constantly. and it's switching between the channels mm. and sometimes it has that crackly bit of blurry bit. But I am always having conversations in my head whilst trying to sit and hold a conversation like this. You do it now, And yeah. it doesn't stop, yeah, permanently. <laughs> like, it does not stop. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm doing tomorrow and next week and I'm talking to someone, I'm going over a conversation I had last night. Mm. And, and it doesn't go I kind of do that as well. But does that stop with the medication? Because I'm unmedicated, but I'm thinking about Can it. Can I tell you where it stops? Yeah. Do you say things and an after think Shh, why have I just said that for do you reckon yeah. I've offended them yeah, yeah. that yeah, stops yeah. that Does stops it? yeah I will sit up all night yeah. wondering if I've answered correctly I will go over this whole podcast for the next three days at least will you yeah, yeah see I yeah, won't thinking about yeah, it. I've never watched I, I've never ever since being helped watch one of my shows back Ever. I don't do any TV anyway no more, but I've only got my own one. No, one watch it. I mean, I'll no, play but, back No, but I wouldn't. I'd, once I'm out, I'm, I just don't think of it. That's it. It's like I'm, I'm in the moment now, it's, and I've never been able to do that before. So, like, I walk away from it, and that's it. I that's won't spare it another thought. Yeah. And I'm after, and I don't dwell on things either no more. Where I used to take things so personal, and it was all like, you'd be so emotional about things. And I'm not saying I'm, I lack emotion. I probably do a tiny bit because of the field of work I'm in. You've got to. Yeah. I understand how it works now. So if I'm doing a business deal with someone and I'd normally like look at the email or get it read to me and take it so personal. Yeah. Um, why are they putting a comma there for? What are they yeah. trying to like, are they, <laughs> they're trying to mug me off. Are they trying to like, <laughs> I'm stupid. But then now I can read an email and then I'll go back to it and I'll know how to respond. I'll know how to just process things so much better and yeah. I don't have that emotional attachment to everything. I've, I've also got um, slow processing speeds, which is, it can come, you probably know this, with, with being autistic as well. And I wonder if that's something that medication can help with. And that's the, In what the, sense do you have slow processing? What do you mean? Um, so 
all the information I'm taking in, all that, because I, I wonder if it's because I'm taking in so much, like, and I'm sure you're the same sat in this room, I'm taking in every bit of information, how many microphones there is, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the curtains, I've already counted that there's three panels over there on that wall, and there's a plant here and a plant there, I like that it's symmetrical, but then this one he has thrown me off. <laughs> and so all of that, I'm, I'm taking in all of that, so the conversation I'm having here, because I know this conversation inside out, it's, a, it's one that I can hold, yeah. but if we were just sat eating dinner and we were talking talking about mundane stuff like oh what have you done last week or next week I'd be going much it'd be taking it all in it would take me a lot longer to answer do you so find you're uninterested in, in, in conversations like that with people because you're just like I just don't care I'm just I'm, I'm over analysing it almost dissecting yeah, it I'm taking it all in and and there would be like a good 10 second gap before I answer yeah. and so up until I was I knew I was autistic I would just always think, what's wrong with me? Come on, speak, answer the question. Why aren't you talking? And, and yeah, it would usually just end up with me leaving the room because everyone uh, around would think she's really hard. She just yeah, mine's the other way, Chris. Her. Mine's the other way. Mine's uh, answer the question before. When you're saying something, not you, because you sort of speak on the same level as me, yeah. the speech. <laughs> I yeah. feel really comfortable talking. So do you, actually. <laughs> when and, and then when you speak, you start, it's more, you're giving me facts, so I'm a bit more interested. Yeah. If someone's talking to me, I'm thinking, mate, I know what you're saying. Drop <laughs> me out. I know the answer. I could have told you five times. I don't need to know the reason behind it. Mine's too fast. Yeah. So it's, I struggle being around people because if, I can't have a normal conversation. I'm sort of better now. Yeah. But if, if someone calls me and I say, yo, this, 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 this. And they have to tell me something else. I go, mate, I asked you one question. Why are you telling me about something else? I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the stigma. I'm not worried about taking medication. One of my children does, and I've seen a massive difference in, mm. in the benefit to her. Um, I, I've just I've just tried to kind of get on with it because I thought, well, I've come this far. I'm, I'm OK. But just recently, I think with a lot of changes in my personal life, um, I'm having a lot more meltdowns. Yeah. Um, I am struggling. And I've got no no problem in saying, yeah, I'm struggling. I probably do need some more help. And I wasn't sure if to go down the therapy route or the medication route. But um, yeah. Does therapy to help with, with your minds? For me now, um, although I've never stuck around long enough to <laughs> give it a chance. Mm. I used to sit there and think, and I loved my therapist. She was lovely. But t towards the end, I just used to turn up because I liked her. Yeah. But I'd be thinking, I'd, I'd be able to twist any of my around my little finger and there's like a talent of I mine I feel like that yeah. do you know what I'm saying so I'm like that, I can make you feel like I'm sweet if I want to make you feel like I've, I can hide the truth from anyone yeah. if I need to by the way that I can talk mm. and towards the end I was like just looking at the clock thinking well I end up getting this thing thinking alright 24 hours before right, and 24 hours is going to be over in 12 hours it'll be over in the next hour it'll I be do over that. do you do that yeah, yeah? I, I take it off towards yeah. the end I was like mm, I don't really it does help because you're talking about things but if you've got what we've got, you don't need to talk about it. You need no. to actually like, learn to live with it. Yeah. I think learn therapy to be, can be useful, but I think learning strategies can also be yeah. very useful. So maybe more of a practical approach sometimes is, is useful. Yeah, I, I know the strategies what I'm supposed to stick to. I can't stick to them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, don't I know wanna... I'm supposed to take time yeah. out. I know I'm supposed to plan ahead. I know I'm supposed to like prepare myself for different situations and go into places and all of that. And I, and I know that's what I'm supposed to do. Do it all for my children. Yeah. Yeah. My children yeah. are going somewhere new. They'll, they'll have a whole book with pictures and directions on where they're going so that they're prepared so that they haven't got their anxiety before they go into a hospital appointment or a play date or whatever I, could, I don't do it for myself I just think no I'm fine I'll do yeah, it but you're living you're yeah. living for your kids it's a bit different so yeah. like, for me I've, I've it's only me with it so I don't really need to put up with that but I do say to Georgia a lot Georgia stop teaching the baby so much routine don't do that because then he'll get to the point where he don't do things without routine yeah. so I try to turn him from doing things you know what I mean so like when we're for example, Georgia takes the baby to nursery in the morning. She don't really like people being around in them because it ruins her routine. Yeah. But where I know how, how important it is with ADHD to live by routine, I'm trying not to, in, just in case my little boy does have it, yeah. not to make him so obsessive about it. But in terms of like all of that therapy and stuff like that, I feel like it might help for some people. Yeah. But if you tell me to go and take a minute, I ain't got a minute. Mm. What do you mean go and take a minute? I'm trying to. I'm trying to take over the world. Why am I going to go and sit there and take a minute out? I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Do you, do you find? Because I actually went to therapy once, and my reason for going was I was like, I can't stop doing stuff. I was like, I just want to stop doing stuff. I just want to sit and do nothing. Do you find that you can never just like I can never 
sit and do nothing like even watching a movie like can you watch a movie no I, I've only I can't watched watch one a movie film in my whole life I just I google the end the and I'm like right I know it's good yeah and then I'll go have a shower and I'll come back no I it's funny I hate it and I'm like I get it I've read <laughs> You fast forward it to see the ending or anything like that. Is that a thing? I'll read the end I of books. I just don't watch them. I can't watch. I can't sit and watch a film. It's I too long. I can't, I can't do it. Do you know? Do you know one thing I can say about the medication part? I remember taking the medication. I, I remember running to the uh, pharmacy to go and get it because I was so excited. My life was going to change for the better. I thought, right. And I rung my brother and I took the I took the tablet and I rung my brother and said, Ben, 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 you've got to get around the house. He went, what, 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 what? When my head's shutting down. He went, what do you mean? I went, yeah. everything stopped. I'm just thinking about speaking true. He was like, yeah, what's the matter with that? I was like, um, what do you mean? He was like, what, is this normal? You just think about right now. He was like, yeah. I was like, what about all the other stuff? He was like, what other stuff? I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is mad. Because yeah. the music went... I didn't think about a thousand other things. I didn't, wasn't thinking about that light and that curtain. I was just thinking about what was in front of me. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't know if that would freak me out. It don't last forever. But, but it would help. It could, if it could help with myself and my work especially and where I'm not staying focused and I'm I'm missing little jobs here and there, it is starting to affect my life now, mm. then, then yeah, I would look at it for help. But, yeah, I think what do you think well. about medication? So I'm a psychologist and not a psychiatrist, so I'm not yep. a particular expert in that area. But I am aware there's research that suggests in lots of cases of ADHD, medication can be very helpful. So yeah. people talk about being switched on, for example, and it can make a massive difference to people in terms of um, engaging with activities. On the other hand, some people can find it quite difficult in terms of side effects and finding the right type of medication and dosage yeah but i always think it's worth exploring that as an option perhaps discussing it with a psychiatrist because yeah it can make a big difference to people certainly yeah oh, do you think therapy can help other people i think i think it very much depends on what your issues are so therapy is often about exploring emotion emotional issues mm. which you know why shouldn't someone with adhd or autism need that and benefit from that but also i think that a more practical approach can be appropriate in those yeah. in these, these situations but then I think it's important to explore different options with the person that we're working with and let yeah. them make choices so for example I've had AD, people with ADHD who will spend a lot of time meditating um, and other people the whole idea of meditation or yoga whatever that would just really frustrate them so it's got to be the right thing for yeah. a person so it don't, it don't make sense oh, meditating I would no, never no, no, honestly, no, no, that's what I mean and this is what I really struggled right is unless you've actually got it, it's so hard to, to understand it, right? Mm. So if I say to Christine, I'm going to use you as an example, right? <laughs> Shut your eyes right now and don't think of nothing for 10 seconds. Oh, I can't do it. Meditating's yeah. not an option. So when I was looking at these things and it was like, oh, meditate, do that. I was like, it was making me upset because I was like, what do you do mean that. meditate? I, yeah. can't, I can't even be in my own head for, like, I'm thinking about a thousand things. How am I going to shut my eyes and yeah. not think? It's just like... It's, it's impossible to it's do. It's kind of finding what works for you. It's with anything. Yeah. If, if you've yeah. got anxiety, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you've got depression, like you can do loads of things. It's the same with this. You just have to find what works My for you. My advice would be just be open-minded and just don't let anyone like get in the way of your decision to make yourself better. Yeah, yeah. it's trial yeah. and error. You've got to yeah, find what exactly. works for you. And I've, I've understood yeah, that. Yeah, give me your best children. advice. You give me your best advice. Um, the It's... It's unique for the individual, and remember that, that no two people are the same anyway, and certainly not with people on the spectrum. Um, I've got three children, all with the same diagnosis, that all require different care. Yeah. Um, I find it fascinating. I really do. I find it fascinating how, how you so can get one diagnosis and be different. There'll be yeah. little things in common, like we've had so much in common today, but I'm autistic and he's ADHD. Mm. Might be autistic. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I might be now, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you've got, to, you've got to try stuff out. And if therapy works for you, amazing. If medication works for you, amazing. If nothing yeah. at all, then, you know, you've just got to try and look after yourself the best you can. Yeah. Do you have any advice from a medical point? I, th I think to accept your characteristics and to know that there are lots of neurodivergent people mm. out there and to be aware that you've got the right to set up your life in a way that suits you and so that you can thrive rather than trying to force yourself into neurotypical yeah. norms and making yourself uncomfortable and unhappy. 
Well, that was, I think, what a fantastic answer. Episodes. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. what a fantastic <laughs> answer. No, it is. It's very true, though. That's a wicked I think, answer, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, it is. I think if you, we I used to want to fit in, and it's more common for women to want to do that. I wanted to fit in, so I would mask a lot. I would try and be like other women around me. I'd dress like them. I'd copy them. And I would want to be yeah. like them. And in my head, I was nothing like them at all. But I took it so far as to clear my whole wardrobe out and and copying the girls that I was working around. And I still do it. So I was on a really glamorous show. I would dress like them. I'd change my accent. I'd speak like them. I would, really? I would pretend my life was more like theirs than it actually was. Then I'm on onto a really sporty show. Again, massive clear out of my wardrobe. It's expensive being mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, You need to start some fashion brands yeah. off. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> then I became fully into sport. Absolutely. Have this, smash the gym. Great for me, but it took over my whole life. I, yeah. I wanted to be like... The girls that was around, again, so just masking. And I think the more you just become comfortable with yourself when you when you are, like, you're not neurotypical, you're neurodiverse, mm. and just accept it, then life does become a lot easier. But I'm still trying to figure out where I fit in. You see, what, see what she said there about, like, how she gets obsessed with what she's doing? Yeah. If you've got some kind of ADHD or something like that, find something which you like and you'll become the best at it. Like, yeah, because yeah. you become so obsessed with it, you only be the best at it. Yeah, when you're passionate about so something. So passionate. That's, yeah. that's why, like, if, if 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 my boy's got ADHD, I'll find what he's good at, mm. and I'll put everything into making sure he's the best at it. Because then you yeah. get success. Yeah, I'm really, really fortunate with my children's school. It's a forest school, so it's um, oh, so they're outdoors. It's child led. Yeah. It's Lovely. very outdoors. So for my children, they're allowed to follow their passion. If I was allowed to do that when I was at school, I probably would have finished school. Yeah. I go when I go and pick them off. I think, God, I wish I, wish I had to come here. So if for example, they do follow the nor normal curriculum, but if my son wants to do extra maths, if he's really not enjoying French, he's, he's allowed to go and do extra maths. That's where his passion is. That's what he's going to succeed in. That's what he's going to go and be, yeah. you know, making, getting a job off and making money, and that's going to give him so much more independence, whereas most schools you're forced into doing all of these lessons that for people like us, you're never going to use because if it's not part of our passion, it's not going to be part of our life. Yeah. And I love that now schools are changing. I do think there's a big difference in teachers seeing children as individuals and encouraging their strengths instead yeah. of just trying to fit them into a box. And hey, what, do you don't want to imagine telling us or asking us to ask a question about a square times five or something. Like, yeah, you what, that, mate? Yeah. You yeah. what? <laughs> we do like all that, all that yeah. algebra stuff. It's just mad. I've got a calculator. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So if there are people listening and they think that they're neurodivergent, what should they do? I would say find out more about whichever condition that they feel that they have and perhaps look, look for advice about how to manage their neurodivergent condition if they do have one. Yeah. So there's some very good websites out there nowadays and if they feel they benefit from a formal assessment, they could perhaps ask their GP to refer them to an NHS service. Do you think that um, more people from Gen Z, they're kind of identifying themselves as being neurodivergent um, than any other generation? Why do you think that is? I think they do. And I think that's because there's a lot out there on social media and also there's more acceptance. It's, be, it's fine to be neurodivergent. So, yeah. And on the whole, I think that's a positive thing. But I think also it's important to have um, as accurate a picture as possible mm. about different neurodivergent conditions and what they what they involve yeah yeah i feel like even with autism i like i don't know that from before 10 years ago yeah. it's quite a new exactly. thing yeah yeah where can people look for support if they need it i mean there are some very good websites around so the national autistic society is a really good source of information um there's the adhd foundation for example which is really good um gps may be able to provide support Learning support departments in universities can often be very helpful. Um, line managers at work, maybe the um, occupational thera therapy department at work. So yeah, there's lots. And there, yeah, there are online forums and WhatsApp groups, for example, Facebook groups. I first became more aware of this um, 
of autism and ADHD when I was doing lots of assessments for dyslexia. So people would come to me for an assessment for dyslexia. And I think, oh, I think there's something else going on either instead or as well. And at first I was reluctant to suggest it, but I find on the whole it's quite well received. And I think it's just a question partly of the language you use. Mm. Um, So, you know, have you ever considered that you might have some autistic traits, for for example? And it's quite surprising that quite often people have have already considered that or it may have already been suggested to them so yeah. Yeah. I, you know I think it's not really a subject to shy away from but I do agree with what you're saying if it's like a parent of a child then it's yeah. a slightly more sensitive conversation yeah, yeah. to have really yeah it is. yeah unless you're me you can just say it but well, yeah. <laughs> it's part of the ADHD isn't it yes <laughs> yeah. don't hold I don't that. think that's what you wouldn't say to no, people it's not it's helpful though isn't it yes. <laughs> That was such a good episode. Thank you all so much. I, I could talk to you all day. Well, that's it for that episode. I'd like to thank my amazing guests. And if you enjoyed this app, please do rate, review and subscribe because it really helps.